said that's not good enough everybody say yeah. i welcome everyone to our bible study tonight and i pray that the word will be of benefit and profit to everyone in jesus name yeah. we've been going through the epistle of paul to the corinthians and we're about coming to the end and as we bring everything, we're coming to the conclusion. I pray that everything we have learned from the beginning until now will be remembered by us and will do us good in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for your children. Thank you for your sons and daughters. Thank you for the members and ministers in the church. Thank you for the people outside everywhere who are connected together in various church locations as we come to you to study together we pray lord the spirit of god will keep us awake studying the word in jesus name and we pray that relevant uh, passages of the word of god that we are sending to us in particular will do everyone good in jesus name we pray, Lord, that this backbone of the believer, the study of the word, will do everyone good so that we'll stand firm and we'll stand erect and we'll stand steadfast in the teaching and the practice and the doing of the word of God in Jesus' name. Open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your word even tonight. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And I'm reading from verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Reading from verse 17. I am glad of the coming of Stephanas and Fortunatus and Achaicus. For that which was lacking on your part they have supplied in verse 18 it tells us for they have refreshed my spirit and yours therefore acknowledge them that are such now in verse 19 and the churches of asia salute you aquila and priscilla salute you much in the lord with the church it, that is in their house and now in verse 20 all the brethren greet you greet you one another with an holy kiss verse 21 the salutation of me paul with my own hand and in verse 22 if any man love not the lord jesus christ let him be anathema maranatha in verse 23 the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you and then verse 24 it says my love be with you all in christ jesus and everybody said amen, amen. today we're looking at these verses of scripture and the subject tonight is the dedication and godliness of heaven bound brethren the brethren he mentioned some of them by name and then he collected all of some of them together and spoke about the church in the house of aquila and priscilla and then he said the brethren should greet one another with affection with love and yet preserving holiness of doctrine holiness of life and holiness of character the dedication and godliness of heaven bound brethren three things we're looking at as we divide the verses into three number one appreciation and praise for the for transparent brotherliness and consecration these uh, people that paul the apostle mentioned they were converted not only that they were committed and consecrated to the lord and they were devoted to the service of paul the apostle and the saints as well and so paul the apostle showed appreciation for them and he praised their transparency in brotherliness and consecration number two 
Aquila and Priscilla with trustworthy brethren. Aquila and Priscilla, husband and wife, a family, they distinguished themselves in the service of the Lord, in the knowledge of the Lord, and in devotion to see that other people are preserved in the Lord, are perfected in the Lord. And the other brethren with them too, associated with them, they were trustworthy brethren in the church and in the various churches number three now is the affection of paul for true believers in christ affection of paul the apostle and the association he had with them he dissociated himself with false brethren in fact he said anathema Maranatha For the people that do not love The Lord Jesus Christ But the people that love the Lord He expressed his love He gave his love And he said in my love for you All the brethren in Christ Affection The affection of Paul For true believers in Christ Let's come to number one now Number one Is the appreciation and the praise for transparent brotherliness and consecration. We're coming to the fight to verse 17 again. It says, I am glad. It says, I am happy. You will think that if somebody is holy, it doesn't have anything to do with happiness. You think if somebody is godly, like Paul the Apostle, it doesn't have anything to do with gladness. They go together. If you are holy, you have to be happy. If you are godly, you ought to be glad. And it says, the fellowship of Stephanas, the fellowship of Fortunatus, and the fellowship of Achaicus make me happy and make me glad. Why? They're transparent. Why? They're trustworthy. Why? They're helpful. Why? They're comforting. Why? They're very sincere. And it said, because of that, I'm happy, I'm glad. You must remember that Paul the Apostle spent a lot of time in the prison. And there were a lot of people that were against Paul. And he said, the Lord has given open doors, but there are many adversaries. And so a person like that, who have been beaten, who have been hated, who have been rejected, who have been pushed off, and who have been despised. When people come who are sincere and honest and safe, and transparent and trustworthy it will bring joy and gladness the same thing with you if you're going some going through some troubled waters if you're at a crossroad if you're having some challenges and then you find brethren and they come and they leave everything behind and they come to fellowship with you it makes you happy it gives you comfort you are no different from Paul the Apostle that's why he said I am I'm glad of the coming of Stephanas and of Fortunatus and of Achaicus for that that which was lacking on your part. He said, you Corinthians, you missed a great chance of ministry to me, Paul. You missed a great chance of fellowship with me, Paul, the apostle. You're too busy. I'm of Paul. I'm of Apollos. I'm of Sabas. I'm of Christ. And because of your babyish attitude, you missed a lot. But thank God, when these three uh, committed brethren came, that which was lacking on your part, they supplied. And and then in verse 18, it tells us, For they have refreshed my spirit. They have refreshed my spirit. They came, and then my spirit that was down, my spirit almost getting discouraged, my spirit almost getting in despair, when they came and they spoke words of comfort, refreshing words, my spirit came up, I became awakened to the reality of the goodness of God that sent these people, they refreshed my spirit and yours. How? How is it Paul the Apostle? 
that they refresh the hearts and the spirit and the mind of the Corinthians. Since they didn't see the Corinthians, they only came to you and said, Yes, when they lifted up my spirit, when they encouraged me, and when I was refreshed, I had new power and new strength and new vision. I wanted to go again and minister to the Corinthians. And because they refreshed me, the minister, and then I'm able to minister in a better way, they indirectly then refresh the mind and the spirit and the soul and awaken the Corinthians. He said, therefore, acknowledge ye them that are such. When you see such people, they are saved. When you see such people, they are sanctified. When you see such people who are holy, when you see such people who are transparently committed to the service of the Lord, acknowledge them appreciate them show affection to them and approve of them let them know like i'm letting you know their names and i'm telling you how they have been of benefit to me there are three things we're looking at number one paul's appreciation of transparent practical support number two proper action of transformed purified saints number three Positive acknowledgement of truly personally sanctified. We're looking at number one here, Paul. Paul's appreciation of transparent, practical support. I am glad. I'm so happy now. I'm fulfilled now. I'm filled up. I'm not thinking of anything now. My persecutions are lower. They are lessened in their impact. All the enemies and all my persecutors, they fade into insignificance because I'm so glad now my happiness makes me to forget all the hatred of those people that persecuted me by the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achaicus. For that which was lacking on your part, they have supplied. Uh, let's look at um, Philippians chapter 2, verse 28. Paul the Apostle, there again is saying, I sent him, therefore, the more carefully that when ye see him again, ye may rejoice, and that I may be less sorrowful. You see that it's not only studying the Bible. It's not only hearing messages, it's not only praying, it's not only isolating ourselves somewhere and praying and fasting and waiting upon the Lord. We need to interact with other believers. And Paul the Apostle said, I sent him therefore to you, the more carefully. I thought about this. You Philippian Christians, you need to see this person that you may rejoice when you see him. When, you, when he fellowships with you, it's not just work, it's not just teaching, it's not just ministry, you know, but the very fact that he can fellowship with you will refresh you and make you rejoice and meet you that I may have less sorrow. In verse 29, it says, Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness. You see that again, gladness. There are, you know, people they think that if you are saved, you are sober, you are sanctified, you are holy, you must never smile, you must never laugh, you must never show joy. And if you are a preacher, if you are an apostle like Paul, you must never show that you are happy when you are preaching. You must stand sober and um, you know very serious and sanctified and don't show any kind of smile and don't ever use the word happy and gladness in the public if you are happy hold it to yourself they don't understand salvation they don't understand uh, sanctification they think that sanctification is where you bury all joy and gladness receive him therefore in the 
Lord with all gladness and show and hold such a reputation. Reputation. You see, Paul the Apostle said, You are sage, Philippian church, and this person I'm sending to you, hold him in reputation. Other people, they see because we are Christians, everybody is at the same level. The new convert and the senior pastor at the same level, all the members and all the ministers at the same level, they don't show respect, any special respect to anybody. But the Paul the Apostle said, This man is coming. It's a devoted man of God. It's a devoted child of God. It's a consecrated, committed child of God. Hold such people, such sanctified people, such serving people, such sacrificial people, hold them in reputation. Respect them. Look at verse 30. It says in verse 30, because for the work of Christ, it was night unto death, not regarding his life to supply your lack of service unto me to supply your lack of service again he was telling the philippians that those philippians they miss ministering to paul the apostle but this person walked himself almost to the point of death he said such a person who is so committed will forget his life will forget luxury or will forget his convenience or will forget his health and minister unto me in your place you must hold such people in reputation we're looking at hebrews chapter hebrews chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 10 for god is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which ye have showed toward his name in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister you see that thank god we evangelize the sinners in the world thank god we're so winners and thank god we're reaching out to the people in the world but we must not forget the members of the church the saints in the church when they are problem when they are bereaved when they when they lose their job when they lose uh, somebody or when something that is not a uh, good has happened we need to visit them and we need to support them we need to understand that real christian life demands practical support from every professing christian to all the other members of the body of christ in verse 11 it says in verse 11 and we desire that every every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end and then in verse 12 it says that she be not slothful not forgetful not lazy that he be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience faith and perseverance inherit the promises let's look at number two here number two is proper action of transformed purified saints proper action although we have intention although we have affection well they don't see my affection but God knows I love everyone. They don't see my intention. Actually, I want to be a blessing to everyone. Action must follow intention. Your action must express your affection. And the love that is hidden within you must be expressed in love. And it is that that makes people to, they don't know your intention. They don't know what's in your heart. They don't know about your private prayer life. All they know is your action. Practical love that will show to the people around you that they know that this is an affectionate, a caring, a loving, a supportive brother or sister or member of the church. Proper action of transformed, purified saints. The first part of, that, part of verse 18, for they have refreshed my spirit and yours. They have refreshed my spirit and yours. How do you refresh somebody? Somebody is thirsty. You give him a clean glass of water, cold. That's refreshing him. 
somebody has been really in pain because of bad news and then you come and you give good news that's refreshing them somebody is inside the problem and is almost overwhelmed by the problem and then you come and you bring the love of God and you share the promise of God that is refreshing them somebody says I don't even know how to pray anymore or what to pray about I'm so tired and I'm so weary because of the problem I have and you get near them and then you pray along with them and you lift up their spirit in prayer that's refreshing them it's a Paul the apostle said for they have refreshed my spirit I didn't know that you know a person like an apostle an apostle who could sing in the prison an apostle who could tell you know those people if i am guilty i'm not i don't worry i don't care to die but i appeal unto caesar i didn't know that somebody as courageous and as uh, upright and as uh, you know devoted as paul the apostle that anybody could come to refresh him you know that's how we think that you know he is a pastor he reads the bible he knows the bible he has revelation from god and with all the revelation he hears he has from god we don't want to disturb him we don't want to disturb his thoughts and his life he's always praying he's always reading the bible he's always committed to the work and the holy ghost is comforting him and god is with him we don't want to touch him at all it, people did not think like that Paul the apostle said yes I'm an apostle and yes I've crossed all those seas and yes I've done all those seas yet when they came they refreshed my spirit and then I had the courage I had the stamina and I had the backbone to write unto you and to pass unto you part of the refreshing you know, they gave unto me they refreshed my spirit and uh, yours that tells us then we ought to be very thoughtful of our action towards people if you are not thoughtful you are not going to have proper action of refreshing you know, to other people you have to think through before you can do that it tells us in second corinthians chapter 7 and i'm reading from verse 6 second corinthians chapter 7 reading from verse 6 nevertheless god that comforted those that are cast down comforted us by the coming of titus not only prayer by the coming of titles not only checking up the promises all alone by myself by the coming of titles not only listening to you know messages on youtube on the webcast but by the coming of titles we have been refreshed and we have been comforted look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says and not by his coming only but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you when he told us of your earnest desire your mourning and your fervent and uh, mind towards me so that i rejoiced the more that's paul the apostle if that could happen to paul the apostle think about the rest of us think about our pastors think about our overseer think about our brothers and sisters we need that affection one to the other we need that love one to the other we need that consolation one to the other we need that interaction one to the other and we need that fellowship of love one to the other so that the comfort that god wants to give us it can pass it through a brother there and through a sister there the refreshing that god wants to give the believer it can pass it through a fellow brother and a fellow sister and then there will be joy, there will be gladness, there will be happiness There will be comfort, there will be consolation And I pray that this kind of love and affection and consolation Will multiply in our fellowship in our midst in Jesus' name Let me hear a good amen Look at verse 13, in verse 13 Therefore we were 
comforted in your comfort we were comforted knowing that you are not discouraged knowing that you are up and doing knowing that you understand the message knowing that you pick up the message and it has become a kind of enlightenment to you and it makes you want to move on we are comforted to you therefore we were comforted in your comfort yea and exceedingly the more joyed we for your job for the joy of titus because a spirit was refreshed by you all his spirit was refreshed by you all that what the lord is telling us and teaching us here is that the church should not just have dry doctrine doctrine without love doctrine without affection doctrine without fellowship Doctrine without visiting one another, doctrine without sympathizing in her and supporting in her, each other. Doctrine, yes, but the doctrine should produce proper action, positive action, practical action from a transformed, purified heart so that everybody will feel the goodness of God and the joy of the Lord and the happiness of the spirit we ought to have in Philemon chapter 1 verse 7 Philemon chapter 1 verse 7 for we have great joy and consolation in thy love you see that not only we have hope of getting to heaven we have joy and we have real interaction with the lord he is our savior he is our redeemer is the lover of our soul yes we have joy but we go beyond that you are born again he is born again she is born again we are born again and he puts us in the family what do you think of a family that they never talk at all but they are members of the same family no hatred no animosity each one is just busy and occupied and involved with what they want to do the children are not in good communication with their parents no hatred no malice nothing only that they just don't think talking together speaking together encouraging each other comforting each other they don't think that's part of the family they eat they do everything they are healthy they are well accommodated only that there's no affection that should not be in the same thing with the same thing with the family of god we have great joy and consolation in thy love because the powers of the saints are refreshed by thee brother the powers of the saints are refreshed i want you to begin to think now how many of the believers do you know and how do you know their problems? Have you spoken to them since? Have you contacted that minister, that member? Oh, I think they're so busy. And after all, they are hearing the Bible study. Everything they are hearing is ministering to them. Why do I need to bother them again? Well, have great joy. Well, have great consolation in your love when you manifest that love and when you interact with that love and there is affection i pray the lord will help us to have the proper practical purifying peaceful action that will help other people's lives in the fellowship as well in jesus name number three now number three positive acknowledgement of the truly personally sanctified positive acknowledgement of those who are truly sanctified and they are personally sanctified you know the uh, disease of many people this is a spiritual disease now when somebody has done wrong we're quickly to jump up and correct why did you do that why did you say that why did you go that way when they do well we never comment when they do right we never say that's good that's fine i appreciate that i love that 
that's the best part of you i've never seen something like that that you have been doing this is good whenever i found them whenever I acknowledge them only when they do wrong it's like we're waiting we're waiting for him to go wrong we're waiting for her to go wrong and then we we'll rise up with some club in our hand and we'll say that should never happen are you not a christian are you not born again my brother my sister when they did well you didn't pass any comment but you see here paul the apostle said in first corinthians chapter 16 verse 18 the second part therefore therefore means because they refresh my spirit and yours because they live right because they showed the proper action and because they show the affection they ought to show and they're doing the right thing therefore acknowledge them acknowledge ye them that are such not only the three people mentioned other people like them acknowledge them I pray God will make us forget ourselves and to acknowledge other people in Jesus' name. Give me the amen that show you will do it. Second Corinthians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 12. It says, for our rejoicing is this. Look at Paul talking about he is glad is happy is comforted is refreshed is rejoicing look at paul and think about yourself did you ever think that you need to be joyful and the people around you do they ever think you need to be joyful or do they just think that you're a bookworm only Bible reader, Bible study, and Bible teacher, Bible student, Bible scholar. Give us some joy. We need joy. Like Paul the Apostle says, for our rejoicing is this. The testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you one look at verse 14 there in verse 14 it says as also ye have acknowledged us in part acknowledged us in part acknowledged us in part paul just coming out of the prison and then one of the members of the church met him and still was able that's my pastor yes was in the prison in philippi that's my pastor and then there were bodies fierce within and fighters without and yet when i meet him i'm so glad i acknowledge him i identify with him that is my minister that is my shepherd that's the one that helped me and brought me into the kingdom that's the one that helped me grow in in the grace of god he says as also ye have acknowledged us in part that we are your rejoicing look at that paul said here is what i appreciate that i see that you affirm that we the ministers are your rejoicing even as ye also are ours in the day of the lord jesus i pray god will grant us all this in our lives in jesus name second timothy chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 19 second timothy chapter 2 reading from verse 19 nevertheless the foundation of god standeth sure having their seal the lord knoweth them that are his and let everyone that nameth the name of christ depart from iniquity verse 21 if a man therefore perch himself from these, if a Christian will look inward and perch himself and perch herself from self centeredness and perch himself and perch herself from ego, 
and from self-consumption. If a person will look inward and purge himself herself from self-satisfaction, if a man therefore purge himself from these, it shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work prepared unto every good work in verse 22 it says flee also youthful laws but follow righteousness faith charity peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart and then in verse 25 in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves you see that when people do right acknowledge them appreciate them tell them make make practical action visible you've done well not only when they do wrong now when they do wrong you will instruct them in meekness they're fighting against their own interest they're working against their own interest and they're working against their own progress but they don't know because they're looking at one direction they're looking at how they did it yesterday they're not looking at the present time and they allow yesterday to spoil the challenges and the opportunities of today and they're not looking at the future now because you are not in their problem and you're not in their thoughts you step back and you say if my brother will look this direction he'll make progress faster towards the future if my brother will add something to what he's doing today he'll be better than what he was yesterday now if i were wrong and somebody wanted to speak to me how will i accept well, I accept if the person came to me and bullied me and shouted on me and pushed me and said, I'm trying to tell you, if you don't take my word, you're going to, you know, make a mess of your life. How will I feel if somebody talks to me like that? The way you want other people to correct you, the same way you correct other people. In meekness, in gentleness, in love, in lowliness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth the lord help every one of us to grow in grace in jesus name i'm waiting for a good amen. amen number two now number two aquila and priscilla with trustworthy brethren in all churches first corinthians chapter 16 verse 19 the churches of asia salute you Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. And then in verse 20, it tells us, All the brethren greet you, greet you one another with a holy kiss, not with a lustful kiss, sinful kiss, sensual kiss, with a holy keys if the keys will not produce holiness will not generate holiness will not sponsor holiness will not produce holiness and will not increase holiness then don't do it only if your way of greeting and your style of greeting and your habit of greeting will promote holiness will produce holiness will project holiness and will purify the people and they remain holy that's the style of greeting you ought to have now we're looking at three things here. number one christ-like commitment to the preacher's affection christ-like commitment to the preacher's perfection number two consuming consecration with persevering paul consuming consecration with persevering paul number three is commendable contribution for purposeful preservation let's come to number one christ-like commitment to preachers perfection we're coming to acts chapter 18 here we're meeting uh, uh, aquila and priscilla husband and wife christian consecrated christian 
committed Christians, devoted Christians, and people who are always looking as to help other people and making them better. Look at first Acts chapter 18, verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. In verse 25, it says, This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in the spirit. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. Look at his limitation only knowing only, understanding only, and digging deep only into the baptism of John that was his limitation he knew much about repentance but not much about regeneration he knew much about restitution with John the Baptist had taught but he didn't know much about redemption he knew much that John had taught but he didn't know much about what Jesus had taught he didn't know about the death and burial of Jesus Christ that brings us salvation he didn't know about the grace of God that makes us free from sin and makes us to live a righteously holy life yes it was it was a real student of the Bible but only knowing the baptism of John that was his limit that was the ceiling of his knowledge about the sanctification that Jesus prayed for he didn't know about that about the Holy Ghost baptism he didn't know about that about the riches of the grace of God according to what Christ had done on the, cro on the cross of Calvary he didn't know about that but he knew only only the baptism of John here is where Aquila and Apollo and uh, Priscilla here is where they come in look at the next verse now it tells us in verse 26 and he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard whom when Aquila and Priscilla had died they knew they heard they could see about his fervency about his might about his youthful energy in declaring the word of God about his boldness and about his being mighty in the scripture but then they knew his size was not beyond the stature of John the Baptist therefore Aquila and Priscilla took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. He knew the way of God to a limit. But now they took him and they expanded the word of God, expounded the word of God, exhorted him, enlightened him, and moved him forward to perfect his knowledge in the Lord. Christ like commitment to the perfection of preachers they made and that is an example for you an example for me that when we look at others the new converts or maybe not, not those who are too new they have been in the Lord from the time of John the Baptist because John the Baptist had died now for some years this chapter 18 of, uh, of Acts of the Apostles and John the Baptist died before the Lord Jesus Christ many years have passed before this Acts chapter 18 and yet the man was limited and they brought him up so that they can perfect his knowledge in the Lord that's what God is calling us to do when you see other people they are Christians maybe they are preachers maybe they are soul winners maybe they are Christian workers but they're limited in their knowledge then you draw them near and you give them material you might point them to materials we have already on our website the materials we have already on our YouTube the materials you have yourself and then that word will perfect them Colossians chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 28 Colossians chapter 1 we're reading from verse 28 
whom we preach, warning every man, not only Apollos, but every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom. We are warning every man, and we are teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man, look at that, every man, every man, every man, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. When our group pastors are preaching to our members, our workers in the group, that's the intention to perfect every man in Christ Jesus. And when our overseers are preaching the word, maybe they have been Christians for many, many years, and yet we are revealing to them what they still need to know so that we will present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. And when you have the chance, the opportunity, or the, you know, the service to another person to teach them the word of God that will perfect their knowledge, that will perfect their decision, that will perfect their consecration, that will perfect their yieldedness and absolute, absolute surrender to the Lord that you may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Look at number two here. It's a consuming consecration with persevering Paul. It tells us in Romans chapter 16 and we're reading from verse 3. Romans chapter 16 verse 3. Greet Priscilla and Aquila. Priscilla and Aquila. Here they come again. Why? My helpers in Christ Jesus. Apollos, who did not have enough knowledge like them, they helped him. Paul the Apostle, who had revelation above them, they helped him. And so you look at yourself, those who are lower than you in the Christian fold, how do you help them to perfect them? You look at those who are power with you. They have the same knowledge. They have the same opportunity. And what do you do to them? Still to help them. You look at those who are higher than yourself in spiritual things. What do you do? Like Priscilla and Aquila, still to be of help to them. In verse 4, it says in verse 4, Who have for my life laid down their own necks. For my life laid down their own necks. Actually, they were not security officers, but they made themselves even bodyguards for the for Paul, the apostle. Anything that will touch his life, anything that will come near, we cannot run as fast as he is running. We cannot get to the peak of the mountain that he has gone to. We cannot reach the regions beyond that he is reaching. And we need to protect him and preserve his life. And therefore, rather than endanger the life of Paul the Apostle, they would rather come in front of him, come beside him, so that they would lay down their very life, even for Paul the Apostle. They had this consuming consequence for the preservation for the protection of Paul the apostle who have for my life laid down their own necks unto whom not only I give thanks but also all the churches of the Gentiles look at verse 5 it says likewise greet the church that is in their house greet the church that is in their house Paul the Apostle had gone to Corinth, had gone to Philippi, had gone to all those places to preach the word of God. And then when those converts are brought together, and Paul the Apostle had gone to another place, these people, Aquila and Priscilla, will, pro will provide their house as a place of worship so that the preservation of the converts can be handled very well. Number three here. Number three is uh, talking about the commendable contribution for purposeful preservation purposeful preparation that's why they give their churches that's why they gave what they had so that those converts will come together and they will preserve them in the Lord in the faith in first Corinthians chapter 16 reading from verse 19 it says the churches of Asia salute you Aquila and Priscilla 
So I let you march in the Lord with the church that is in their house, the church in their compound, the church in their quarters, the church in their institution. Whatever they had, whatever land, whatever personal space they had, they gave that to the preservation of the converts in the church. And that is what the Lord is expecting from you and from me. That whatever we have, we submit and we surrender for the preservation of the people of God. So that the word of Christ will be fulfilled. In Matthew chapter 16, reading from verse 18. Matthew chapter 16, reading from verse 18. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And as uh, what Aquila and Priscilla had in mind, so that those converts, those believers, those babes in Christ and those members of the church that do not have a place to gather for the minister, for the preacher, for the pastor shepherd to be ministering to them. They provided their house so that temptation will not, over, will not overwhelm those converts and difficulties and challenges will not overwhelm them. The church will be preserved. I pray that whatever you have, whatever I have, whatever we have, we surrender to the church so that the converts, the members, the disciples will be preserved in Jesus' name. Your amen is always weak. God bless you. That amen is good. Now, point number three. Point number three now, affection of Paul for true believers in Christ. The affection of Paul the Apostle for true believers in Christ. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and we're reading from verse 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, reading from verse 21. The salutation of me, Paul, with my own hand. Look up here. Paul the Apostle, very serious and you know corrective in everything from chapter one i hear concerning you there's division among you i want to let you know that the church is one and you should be united i hear some of you are saying paul apollos and, and this and that is paul crucified for you the man was hard on them because he wanted them to come together and be united and then he comes to chapter 2 chapter 3 you're still babes i couldn't even talk to you as matured people now he laid it on them and now he's about to end the epistle and he said corinthians you know what i greet you my salutation the salutation of me paul with my own hand you know sometimes you look at these uh, preachers pastors overseers shepherds we never see them greet anybody they're very they're thinking about the second coming of the lord paul did they're thinking about the rapture paul did they're thinking about the many things to correct in the church Paul did and they're thinking of many things that still need to be done about their marriage about the understanding of this understanding of that they're thinking of setting the people right in resurrection Paul did but he didn't forget to greet the people let there be fellowship let there be understanding let there be interaction let them understand that everything we preach everything we say is to prepare them for heaven but in preparing them for heaven we don't want to make them miserable here on earth we want to see as much as possible how they interact with us how they connect with us how they are happy with us my the salutation of me paul with my own hand 
hands let us add that human aspect to our interaction with the people of God and the, the Lord help you in Jesus name and then in verse 22 it says if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ let him be anathema maranatha and in verse 23 it says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you verse 24 it says my love ah, Paul you have love I thought you know, you're only for doctrine I thought you're only for you know take the hammer raise it high and crush everything that should not be there in Corinth yes I'll do that and yet you have to do that in love and it says my my love be with you all all those argumentative people all those uh, disaffectionate people all those uh, people who are confrontational all of you no exception my love with you all in Christ Jesus and the church said I pray that the love of God will prevail in my heart in your heart in our hearts together in Jesus name the affection of Paul for true believers in Christ three things we're looking at here number one address and greetings from Paul the apostle apostle of Christ number two anathema for gainsayers against Christ number three abundance of grace for all in Christ let's look at number one address and greetings from the apostle of Christ it says my salutation the salutation of me Paul with my own hand now who is this Paul Paul is the apostle of Christ. Look at chapter 1, verse 1. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. An apostle not of Corinth, an apostle not of Galatia, an apostle not of Philippi, an apostle not an apostle made by Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and sustenance our brother. In Galatians chapter 1 verse 1, Galatians chapter 1 verse 1, Paul, an apostle not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Look at verse 10. For do I not persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? If I yet please men, I should not be the servant of God. Christ he knew himself all the time that he was the apostle of Christ a servant of Christ a bond slave of Christ and he was to fulfill only the will of God see yourself like that anywhere you are you are a child of God you are a saint one a servant of Christ and you are a member a sheep of the shepherd Christ and therefore you comport yourself everywhere you are uh, everywhere you go in that understanding that you are a servant of God we're coming to number two here number two it says in verse 22 of that first Corinthians chapter 16 verse 22 it says if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ let him be anathema Maranatha. This point number two, anathema for gainsayers against Christ. What does that mean? Anathema. In the original language, anathema mean, means let him be accursed. Maranatha means the Lord cometh. Join those two words together. Let him be accursed. Our Lord cometh to execute judgment the judgment denounced come back to that verse again if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ any man or the St. Paul the Apostle Paul the Apostle was a man of different capacities different culture and different tribe 
and different environment. Before he came to the Lord, the Pharisees were part of his life and he was part of their lives. And they hated Christ. They did not love the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that with them, he persecuted the believers. Now he's born again. Now he's reconciled unto God. Now he's a child of God. He loves the Lord Jesus Christ now. But there are still Pharisees, there are still Pharisees and Sadducees who do not love the Lord Jesus Christ. They were his old friends, but nevertheless, he also declared the truth. If any man here on earth, if any man among the Jews, if any man among my king's men in the flesh do not love the Lord Jesus Christ and they curse him, and they reject him and they cast as passions on him whoever they are even if they were my friends when i was a pharisee myself if any man love not the lord jesus christ let him be accursed anathema maranatha when christ comes he will judge him if any man who claims to be in the church will put the apostle and then uh, even though it's in the church because of the hatred he has for paul and he feels that paul the apostle is suffering for what he did before he became a christian and therefore be preaching a kind of gospel the gospel of envy and the gospel of uh, animosity and the gospel of hatred and he will not declare the word of christ but justifiably as jesus died on the cross he said if any man even in the church if he does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, he is a curse. And when the judgment of God comes, Christ is coming, judgment will come upon him. There were people who were running around and they preached another gospel and they had another spirit and they were not declaring the word of salvation and they were not being faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ who gave his life and who gave everything everything he had for the salvation of the world they do not love Christ and they do not affirm the word of Christ they do not sympathize with Christ on the cross of Calvary who suffered so much and said my God my God why have you forsaken me if there's any man like that a false prophet only pleasing himself and is not pleasing the Lord is preaching a gospel that doesn't make people to love the Lord with all their heart all their soul all their mind if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. The Lord is coming. That's why it said in Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 8. Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 8, and he said, Though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which were preached unto you, let him be a cause anathema in verse 9 it says as we said before so say i now again if any man of whatever persuasion any man of whatever denomination if any man even of our own congregation if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received let him be a cause anathema that means the lord is putting that person under the curse of not loving the lord and maranatha the lord is coming in jude chapter 1 reading from verse 14 jude chapter 1 reading here from verse 14 and enoch also the seventh from adam prophesied of this saying Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. What's he coming to do? In verse 15, it says to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that ungodly among them 
of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him they don't love him they speak against him verse 16 it says these are murmurers complainers walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaketh great swelling words of men's uh, great swelling words having men's persons in admiration because of advantage look at verse 18 in verse 18 it tells us remember how the apostles told us that there should be mockers in the last days who should walk after their own after their own ungodly laws verse 19 these be they who separate themselves they won't identify with those who are preaching the whole word of god they will not identify themselves with those who consecrate and sacrificially serve the lord in love they separate themselves the essential having not the spirit judgment comes upon them eventually but today we can approach them and convince them and preach to them earnestly pleading with them to repent and to love the lord and the love of god will come to them the grace of god will come the lord will forgive them in jesus name but if they continue not loving the lord until the very end then anathema maranatha they'll be caused and the lord will come and he'll bring judgment unto them number three now number three abundance of grace for all in christ for you for me and for all of us in jesus name the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you in a time of temptation in a time of trial in a time of difficulty at your crossroads in the time of sickness in a time of pressure in a time when you don't know what to do the lord will come to you and the grace of our lord jesus christ will be with you when you feel all alone and you are lonely when you feel helpless and powerless when it appears things have turned upright upside down when it appears that your mountain looks Im immovable the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you when some things happen in your life that arouse something like anger and it's like you know you want to you are tempted to jump on them and beat them and push them away and you are tempted to act like you are not uh, you know sanctified the grace of god will come to you and the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you all when you have a challenge a mountain to climb a work to do a duty to perform and you don't have the wisdom you don't have the skill you don't have the ability and you don't know what you are going to do when, you, when it looks like you're coming to the end of your way and it's like you know the devil is saying you will finish that christian life midway you will not go to the end then the grace of god will show up and the grace of our lord jesus christ will be with you and my love be with you all in the name of jesus christ grace and love grace and mercy grace and compassion and grace and provision abundant in your life all the days of your life in jesus name let's rise up now and talk to the lord in prayer let the grace of god overflow all that anxiety all that problem all that difficulty let the grace of god come and that grace of god is always available you will be who god has called you to be